Hi, I'm Keith Whitelock and welcome to Watercolor Workshop. For today's demo, I'm going to do a little red crab shanty that I've painted lots of times. It's a favorite subject and I'll show you how I'd treat it. Here is the sketch for the little crab shack that we're going to work on today. And the most interesting feature of this, in terms of jumping out at you in the painting, will be the nice bright red color that I want to use. That's going to really assert this as the subject. We will have some dark areas underneath, and we'll put in a little tree line back here. We'll have a little bed of weeds, marsh grass coming in down here in the foreground that will help develop a sense of distance from the viewer. And we're going to start with the uh, clouds and we're going to wet that down because we want nice wet into wet soft white clouds in here. Now before I wet the paper I'm going to add a little cadmium yellow in the palette with one one inch brush. With another one inch brush I'm going to mix up a little phthalo blue come up with a nice little wash for that. I'm using two brushes so that I don't cross contaminate within the painting because obviously if we mix yellow and blue together we get green and we really don't want that in our sky. First I will take just clean water and brush over the sky area and I will cut around the roof of the building because I do want a little bit of that plain white roof to come into play a little later. And I'll bring that wash right down to the top of the marsh grass first. There are times when we can get away with painting the entire paper with water because what we will paint later will be so much darker it will just cover everything up. But in this particular instance I'm going to want to paint down there in just a few minutes and there's no need to get that wet. Now that I have that wash established, I'm going to take a little of that yellow and just put in a little warmth here in the middle portion of the sky. I have a little more orange that I'm going to lay in right down next to that. And just by streaking my brush this way, I should be able to blend those two enough that that will be what I want. Now for the clouds, actually we're just going to paint around what we would want as a white cloud and just drag the color up into the rest of the sky. We'll put another white cloud over here. We'll just use the corner of the brush to roughly draw in the shape of the cloud and turning it so that I can get a better angle. Sometimes you'll notice your brush will shed bristles as you paint and it's a good idea to grab those while the wash is still wet because they can dry and leave a little bit of a hard line. And that roughs in our the essentials of our clouds. Now we can take just a little more of that wash and streak it underneath and just drag that down into the damp paper to indicate a bottom to that cloud. And if we don't think it's quite dark enough right near the top of the painting, we can just add in a little more of that same wash. And sometimes it helps to tilt your paper you might not be able to see that well. But if you tilt your paper, you'll let that wet wash run right down near the base. And then you can take a paper towel 
and just drag across there and pick up all that extra water. If we don't get rid of that water, it tends to creep back into the paper. And we can call that a backwash. We'll just dry that. Now the bottom part of the paper is still nice and dry. So I'm going to take some of that sky blue color and jump in right behind this dock and start putting in a base coat for the water. And just as I paint weeds by flipping the brush up, I will flip the brush down into the weeds in uh, preparation for putting those in later. And if I want a reflection on the back end of this boat, again I'm going to leave a little paper, white paper there. Because we always have to remember that with the watercolor having no white paint, we want to save those light colors. We'll just block this in with some broad strokes and let that dry. Now this is dried nicely and got it nice and flat, but actually it looks kind of bad. It looks weak. We'll uh, refer to the sketch. And again, this contrast is really what makes the subject jump out at us. So now we need to get back in. Where to start? We could start with the shed itself. We could start with the background. We could actually put in some of the weeds. I find that it always helps just to start filling in some little areas in the back. I kind of feel like I am working from back to front. Now I'm using about a quarter of an inch flat brush. I'm going to take and wet some yellow ochre. To redden it, I hit a little burnt sienna. This will give me a good fall marsh color. I'm going to start right back here on this little marsh line and just dab in a little of that color and that will kill this white paper. And help get some contrast going in here. Now while that's a little wet, I can actually use a little, a little darker brown. This is just some burnt umber. Just tap that along the bottom of the marsh. And that'll be good enough for right now. Now I'm going to switch to, this is a number eight round. I'm going to take a little phthalo blue, stir that around, and throw in just a little bit of burnt sienna. The two colors will give me a greenish blue that works nicely for background trees. Now it's hard to paint the tree line the way I like with the painting right side up. So I'll flip it upside down and just dance the tip of my brush along the top of the marsh and just let some irregular shapes happen. Now with the brush splayed slightly, I can just drag some of that into the top of the marsh. Now I'm going to switch to a smaller round brush and take just a little bit more of that same color with added water. That will make it a lot lighter. And we have a white boat, but if we want it to pop it will keep one side of it, the shadow side, somewhat darker. Now we'll put that light wash on there. And actually drag some of it immediately down into the water area for a reflection. 
I can also take some of that same color and just prime some of my little pilings with that. This brush points pretty good, so I'll use it also to give a little interior color to that boat. It's good to keep some scrap watercolor paper handy for pointing your brush. I'm going to take a little burnt sienna. This is about a half inch flat. And just drag it across. It's starting to get a little dry. And angling my paper sideways so that I can sort of match the angle of the shingles. I'm going to take a little of that burnt sienna and just drag it down from the ridge of the roof downward. And it does a pretty good job of simulating a good rusty streaky metal roof. And I keep that light. Just let the brush run out of paint. I'm going to also add just a little bit of blue in it. Now for that red color of the shed, I'm going to take a little burnt sienna and I'm going to take a little of this vermilion, which is a red color. It's an orange, orangey red. We don't want to get this thing fire truck red, but we'll get a little wash of this all mixed up and ready to go. Now I'm going to use this same half inch brush and just cut in under the roof line. And this will be the shadow side of the shed. This needs to be a lot darker somewhat later, but rather than try to blend two different colors of this orange, I'm going to go ahead and paint the entire shed the same color and we'll come back later and put in shadows. I've got a little basin sort of hanging on the wall and we'll paint around that. And we'll come back later and add a shadow to the basin and give it its own color. And I have a, a little sign on the front of the building that I'd like to put some words and even fake words on. We'll make sure everybody knows that this is a crab shanty. We'll paint around that sign and just leave that white paper. Now while I have some of this nice orangey color here, I know about what I want to do later with the waves. So rather than let that paint go to waste, we'll immediately jump in and start painting some of the uh, reflections right into the foreground water space. Again, we'll go with the phthalo blue. Phthalo blue is a very versatile color. If we add different browns or grays to it, it makes a nice gray. Now taking some of that little phthalo blue wash, I'm going to continue with the wave action here. And as I work my way back, the brush runs out of paint, and I also keep the little wave peaks smaller and smaller. We'll add some more of that paint to the reflection of the boat, because that will be darker in the water. Now later, we'll have a lot more 
dark reflections from the underside of this dock. We can even put some of that in now ahead of time while we have the paint. The shed's getting about ready to be dry enough to paint on some more, so this time I'm just going to add a little burnt umber. And to one side I'm going to add a little sepia, which is a very dark brown, a blacker brown if you will, that I want to put in some real dark areas under the eaves. I'm just using the very edge of the flat brush. I could have switched to a round at this point, but this one works good for that. Now I think I want to fill in the little weeds, and we have three choices here. We can go with the fan brush, that works good for weeds, a regular round brush like this small detail type brush, or the grass comb with the rather missing bristles. I'm going to use the grass comb this time. We want the weeds to be consistent with the ones in the background, so again we're going to go with the yellow ochre and a little burnt sienna for the redness. Now keeping the brush fairly upright, I'm simply going to lightly bring those bristles upwards into the water. And this will do a great job of indicating a lot of little separate blades of grass and the same brush loaded up again and treated like a flat brush, we can sort of hit that little wet spot and bring it right down to the point where the weeds are emerging from the water. And grabbing a little of that burnt umber mixture that we had earlier, we'll put that down near the base of the weeds and let that do a little bit of wet into wet creeping. I'm going to switch over to a, a little flat brush and immediately start with some reflections. Using some of that burnt umber that I was just putting in the base of the weeds. It's important here to try to remember to keep the little rows of waves aligned Otherwise, they can make the painting appear to be running uphill or downhill. Now to add some shadows to our building, I'm going to take some of that same burnt umber wash and simply repaint the shadow side of the building. Put a little drop shadow on the face of the building. And from this little addition, we'll put a shadow side to that. And a little cast shadow as well. Now returning to the sketch briefly, you'll see that there are a number of pilings, a lot of little boards and things, supports right underneath the building. That's a great opportunity to use a flat brush in a sideways fashion just to sort of block those in really quickly. We could take a lot of time and paint each and every one in separately, but we'll just let the brush do the work for us. Using some of the old Thalo Blue, I'm going to add just a little of that sepia brown. This will give us a nice, perhaps dirty looking color, but it's a nice gray.
This is a half inch flat. Sometimes it's good to use this scrap paper to kind of just massage the tip of the brush and get the width we want. And we can get a little adjustment in that. Then using this brush in this fashion, we'll just come in, we'll leave some little white spaces, and after we overpaint that a couple of times, it'll give us a great simulation of all these little separate poles. I'll come in with a, a smaller flat brush now and pick at some little supports that would be directly underneath of that dock. We could paint in almost every one of these things, but that's time consuming. And we want the watercolor to have a, a fresh, sketchy sort of look. So we'll just let the flat brush do all the work for us. Since that shadow dropping from the roof on a white sign would not be brown. We'll just hit a little blue on that. And a little bit of this bluish color will be really nice for the bottom of this little basin that's hanging here on the wall. The weeds have dried up somewhat now, so it's a good time to come in and take some darker brown. Still using the grass comb brush. and just flip upwards. Of course if you happen to have a fan brush we can use that to basically do the exact same thing. Now if we just take a quick look at the painting it's coming along pretty nicely. We're starting to get some three-dimensional shapes to everything and if we throw the sketch back on here again the complexity of this seems to be much greater. We've got things like poles here, wires, extra little bits of, of writing, and a lot more little drop shadows. So now we can switch to a small round brush and start picking at some of these things and making them pop out at us. For example, right at the top of the building, there could be a little bit of a shadow from the ridge pole. So if we just make that darker, and by altering this with a few little seam lines as if the individual sheets of tin were there. That really adds a lot. Likewise, taking this same pointy round brush and putting in a couple of boards to separate some wall panels or wall boards, it really helps make this thing come alive. This little round brush does a pretty good job at getting inside the skiff. We'll give it a few details. We can also use that to start creating some dimension on all the little pilings. We'll take this little round brush and put a little red bit of bottom paint on the skiff and perhaps just dance a couple of touches of it into the reflection. As long as I have that red paint out, I might as well go into the sign. We can have fun just fussing over little things now. If I think the roof is too consistent, I can turn this and perhaps just throw a little bit of, again, darker paint on a few places. 
one color I really don't have on my palette is black. We can make a great substitute black paint with some phthalo blue and sepia or burnt umber. The reason we don't use or I don't tend to use black paint is because carbon black things like that are actually made from a soot like ingredient and when you paint with them it makes it look as if you literally painted with soot. There's something about the little bits of residual brightness from the blues when you make up your own black colors. They're nice and dark but they just don't look like a dead sooty spot right in the middle of your artwork. And when you thin that same color down you'll see that it does become a dark gray or a bluish type color. It's not really a sooty black. I'm going to take just a little of this burnt umber and pick along at the base of the marsh to help give that some depth. And while I'm at it, I will do the same thing using the same kind of color I used before in these trees. Even though the shed is essentially finished, I can always take just a little rusty color, dry brush, just a little smidge of color, again to add variety. Perhaps deepen that shadow just a little. I'm going to paint this pole in, and again, use the natural flow of your arm. Try and alter the orientation of the painting so that you're not doing something awkward. It's always better to pull something like this along than to try to sometimes paint upwards in an unusual way. And a brush that points nicely will do a pretty good job of just painting in a couple of power wires. I like to take a, a good pointy brush also now and start picking at the weeds. And we'll just use that nice pointy tip to make a few standout weeds. Maybe they're just a little darker or a little different direction or a little longer and your eye will go to those. These can be the little master blades of grass that really grab your attention and then you you're perfectly happy accepting the rest of them as being much more complicated than they really are. It's looking pretty good. I want to pick it a few things in the dock, but the last thing I want to do is just sort of tie this water together a little better. I have just a small amount of yellow ochre in the flat brush. Sometimes the water can get a little bit of a greenish cast, and that can be from a couple of things. Could be just algae in the water. Sometimes the sand reflecting up through the water creates that greenish effect. But we'll just put a little of that in like so. Okay, now with a little blue-gray, we'll just jump in and darken up some of these spaces under the dock. We need just a few little wave forms in the background water to help convey that idea. Perhaps few under the dock.
Now most of the work is finished, so we'll just look this over and add a few details here and there. We also want to take some of that darker brown that we get in the shadows here and drop some of that coming towards us in the reflections. And then lastly, we just need a little darker brown in the weeds. I think I want one or two more little indications of wave peaks in here. And I think that just about has the effect we're after. Well, I'm happy with how this one turned out. I hope you enjoyed today's demonstration. Thanks for watching and join me again here on Watercolor Workshop on Pack 14.